Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are Thank you? you Thank you for coming. And, Thank you. And uh, hope to uh, uh, have you here and uh, uh, eager to learn and uh, listen to your presentation for many Japanese companies to uh, uh, develop their market in the U.S. And uh, maybe they, you can help them in the future. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, I've lived 20 years in North America, working with European companies, helping them to grow the business here. And here I'm going to show you a couple of examples of my last project, introducing a brand new machine technology in the North American market. Uh, the company was established here soon after 2010, and we grew step by step. 2015 we expanded to Canada and then after that we really got the business going and it we became the largest export country in the whole world for the company. It was a unique new solution for the very old traditional equipment market in North America. I've listed some of the important factors that you need to know when you come to do business in USA and North America. Think about the product is it just a product or do you have something else, a value to import to the market? Prepare the catalogs correctly, proper language, mm -hmm. clear samples, mm -hmm. and make sure that the measurements are all American mm -hmm. or in inches, in pounds, mm -hmm. instead of metrics. Right. Manuals the same way. Think about the logistics, mm -hmm. do you bring them in the airfare mm -hmm. or containers or individual components? Mm -hmm. What kind of inventory you want to carry? Mm -hmm. Also pricing, what is a good price for the market, be mm -hmm. competitive, mm -hmm. however still having enough structure mm -hmm. to make profit, to operate and have enough profit to share for the dealer mm -hmm. or the sales team. Mm -hmm. What segments you want to attack, you don't need to go after everything. Mm -hmm. You can choose the areas where you are the best product. Mm -hmm. Also for the territories, are there some territories that are better for you? Mm -hmm. Is it winter territory, summer territory? Mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. You may need financing. In mm -hmm. America everything is sold mm -hmm. through financing. So you may have to have partnerships mm -hmm. for dealer financing and end mm -hmm. customer financing. Mm -hmm. What kind of dealer, distributor mm -hmm. policy you want to have, direct sales, mm -hmm. agents mm -hmm. or partners. Mm -hmm. And how do you market? Online, mm -hmm. exhibitions, mm -hmm. old fashioned media. Mm -hmm. And then you need to be active. Mm -hmm. Nobody comes to you, you need to go out to the market mm -hmm. and communicate things well to your sales team mm -hmm. and to the end customers. Mm -hmm. And use the feedback. Mm -hmm. You learn, mm -hmm. you see new opportunities, mm -hmm. you can modify your operations and mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. And uh, liability, it's a big thing in North America. Mm -hmm. However, you can prepare for mm -hmm. that by having the specs mm -hmm. done well, mm -hmm. the proper safety features, mm -hmm. and you can find a good uh, insur insurance partner as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be patient mm -hmm. step by step mm -hmm. and make sure that you prepare financially mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. that two to three years to grow the business. Mm -hmm. What's the appropriate uh, profit margin for the dealer and distributor? Typically dealers, mm -hmm. distributors, they go from 10-15% mm -hmm. all the way up to 20-25 mm -hmm. maybe even 30% depending mm -hmm. on the, the mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. the product and the price structure of the product. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Here I show that it's kind of a two-step thing. Mm -hmm. You need to reach mm -hmm. end customer mm -hmm. through your marketing and mm -hmm. promotion. However, you do it mm -hmm. together with your sales team or distribution team. Mm -hmm. So you don't just support one or the other. Right. You need to work with both. Right. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that are you coming here with everything you have mm -hmm. or you're trying to uh, choose mm -hmm most suitable, most competitive product mm. for the North American market. Here, for example, mm. us, we didn't bring all the seven, eight models. Mm. We chose four mm. to start with. Mm. That's a, what we felt was most competitive, offered the most advantage mm. or competitive edge for the market. Okay. Here, I want to show that you need to express the value mm. of the product. And I, I use the very Phone interesting. technology, yes. as an example. Way to show, uh, yes, I like the analogy. Yeah. Yes. So we were, mm -hmm. we were competing mm -hmm. products that mm -hmm. were mainly meant for one mm -hmm. uh, application mm -hmm. at the time. Right. Well, we would offer one machine for multiple mm -hmm. jobs mm -hmm. through changing the features mm -hmm. 
and mm-hmm. it was also very flexible mm-hmm. uh, solution. Mm-hmm. I see. Good. Very interesting. Here's a good example. Um, mm-hmm. Traditionally, just like in the old days, mm-hmm. the Japanese cars were coming to North mm-hmm. America. Everybody was about the power muscle, mm-hmm. Detroit V8. Right. And now everything is four cylinder, mm-hmm. 1.5 to 2 mm-hmm. liter mm-hmm. cars. Mm-hmm. Same thing here. Everything about, was about the horsepower, mm-hmm. bigger the better. Mm-hmm. But right. we offered the technology that we were able to do many of the things with much smaller engine mm-hmm. and much smaller machine. Mm-hmm. And that gave an right. other list of opportunities, mm-hmm. doing smaller places, mm-hmm. not destroying the grass mm-hmm. or ground. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. And I guess in a way this this describes how we found a market mm-hmm. that there was nobody there. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of really small units right. and there was a large number of heavier mm-hmm. equipment. Mm-hmm. And we found an area that there was nobody of that mid-size, mm-hmm. flexible, multi-purpose right. solution. And that's where we kind of focused. Here I described that, that typically mm-hmm. you had one machine for one job mm-hmm. and now we can cover multiple jobs. Mm-hmm. And these are some of the segments that we were focusing. Mm-hmm. Landscaping, landscape maintenance, mm-hmm. hardscape, mm-hmm. Uh, tree removal after the storm. Mm-hmm. You go clean up the backyard mm-hmm. and you can do that flexibly mm-hmm. with minimal manpower mm-hmm. and not destroying the grass. Mm-hmm. Also sidewalks, mm-hmm. we were certain mm-hmm. with many of the machines outgrew them. Mm-hmm. So we were perfect for that 48 inch. Or oh, the width of the side streets. Yes. And, uh, and then municipalities like the same mm-hmm. thing, you can do one things in the summer mm-hmm. and other things in the winter. I see. Okay. And even some nurseries like the fe- flexibility of the machines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Working on indoors and mm-hmm. outdoor terrain at the same machine. Mm. Interesting, yes. The other thing that mm-hmm. one needs to remember that America mm-hmm. is a big place. Right, yes. The, the distances mm-hmm. are huge. Mm-hmm. And there's almost 400 million people here. Right. So you don't need to conquer everything mm-hmm. the first year. Right. What we did, we, we started the business in Midwest. Mm-hmm. There's 65 million people right here. Mm-hmm. That's a good sized country mm-hmm. alone. Mm-hmm. Then we expand to New England through mm-hmm. a suitable exhibition mm-hmm. and a couple of contacts there. Mm-hmm. And that's another 60 mm-hmm. million people. Right. And from there, step by step, we grew to Southeast, mm-hmm. West, mm-hmm. and Canada. Mm-hmm. Right. We tend to think Europeans would first enter into the East Coast. Many times, yes. But uh, why Midwest? Well, a couple of reasons. Mm-hmm. Number one, mm-hmm. I was here. Mm-hmm. Number two, this is traditional place mm-hmm. because of the farming. Mm-hmm. Many of the manufacturers are there. Right. And um, mm-hmm. there's also more space here. It's mm-hmm. cheaper to operate the business here mm-hmm. and less mm-hmm. crowded than in East Coast. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So you still think that this is the right path? I think Wonderful. it is. Also the Steps. fact that if you think about the time zones mm-hmm. and distances, Chicago right. is a great hub. Mm. You can easily fly or drive mm-hmm. to anywhere in, in North America. Right. Mm. We also looked into what kind of dealer partners mm-hmm. we need to have. And, mm. You know, there's all kind of big machine dealers, mm-hmm. small equipment dealers. We mm-hmm. were kind of finding the happy mm-hmm. medium. Mm-hmm. We were trying to make sure that the product offering of mm-hmm. the dealer Mm-hmm. is already close to the segments that we chose. Right. So we wanted them to have some kind of tractor or mm-hmm. skid steer, mm-hmm. and then uh, maybe a lawnmower, mm-hmm. hand power tools, mm-hmm. chainsaw, leaf blower, right. wood chipper. So they would take us already mm-hmm. to the customers we want. Right. So then it, they would just add on mm-hmm. to the existing product offering. Mm-hmm. Of course, some dealers were only one location, mm-hmm. some dealers were a little bit bigger with two or three locations in one bigger city, mm-hmm. like Chicago or Minneapolis. Right. And some dealers covered one or two states mm. with multiple locations. Right. Again, depending who is willing to work with you mm. and, and what cover you need for the landscape. Right. Okay. And then, of course, they need to have sales force, mm-hmm. marketing team, mm-hmm. inventory, mm-hmm. service capability. Right. So they are your extensor for the local right. market. Mm. Well, we were able to build relatively mm. quickly somewhat nationwide deal on it. Impressive. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Mainly, in, again, mm. in Midwest mm-hmm. and East, mm-hmm. there's a lot of, lot of farmer land mm-hmm. in right. west from here, so mm. maybe there's a less opportunities there. Mm-hmm. But the idea is, is to grow in West Coast mm-hmm. and also key places like mm. Las Vegas, mm-hmm. Colorado, right. and so on.
Mm. Very impressive. Wow. But Down the goal to was to, to mm. double it in, in years to come. Wow. But I think, you know, mm. with 100 dealers, 200, mm -hmm. 250 locations, mm. that starts to be a suitable. I don't think right. you can go much mm. bigger than that. Then right. you, there's a risk of right. colliding with the mm -hmm. dealers. De yeah. with, the new, with the new technology, mm -hmm. there has to be enough room right. for the dealer to make money. To be able to manage at yeah. the right pace at yeah. the right time. Yeah. Then that service too. Yes. And like you see, there was a good growth. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why doing these right steps mm -hmm. one cannot keep growing right. comfortably and profitably. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much. Well, and thank you. Uh, what's your plan for the future? You still want to be a sales uh, channel developer, a sales representative at the same time, helping the Japanese companies? I, I like mm -hmm. doing this is combining strategic and operational mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and I'll be happy to discuss if there is anybody who has similar plans. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you all for Thank the you. opportunity. Thank you.